Running electrical wires behind your walls is a great way to add an additional outlet or switch right where you need it. We know the idea of working behind drywall or paneling sounds difficult, but fishing electrical wires behind walls is a job you can do yourself with a few common tools, a helpful assistant, and a little patience. First things first, if you aren't comfortable with wiring projects, hire a professional electrician to run your new wire or cable. Check with local building inspectors before doing any electrical work to ensure compliance with local codes. Now, let's get started. Determine the location for your new device. Then decide whether to power your new device from an existing outlet or from the breaker panel. Diagram your new wiring path and measure for the length of NMB cable you'll need. Buy some extra cable in case you encounter any unexpected obstructions. To be clear, cable refers to the wires inside the jacket where the wires are enclosed. Be aware that wire just means the individual circuit feeder wire itself. Ready to go? Let's do this. Step one, turn off the electricity. Make sure to turn off the electricity at the breaker panel to the outlet or circuit breaker you will draw power from for your new device. Use a voltage tester to confirm the power is off at the outlet or breaker. Be sure a new device will not overload the circuit from which you will draw power. And check with local building inspectors before doing any electrical work to ensure compliance with local codes. Step two, mark for the electrical box. Use a stud finder to ensure the location for your new device isn't on a stud. Hold the electrical box up to the wall in the location where it will be installed. Use a level to ensure the outline is straight. Trace around the box with a pencil to mark the area to be cut. Step three, drill a hole in the ceiling or floor. If you'll be running cable through the ceiling, carefully drill a hole with the 1 8 inch drill bit through the ceiling above the new wall box location. If you'll be running cable through your basement or crawl space, drill into the baseboard or floor right next to the baseboard instead. Insert a stiff wire or straightened coat hanger into the hole. In your attic or basement, look for a two x four beam adjacent to the protruding stiff wire. In an attic, this beam is the top of the wall, known as the top plate. In a basement, it's the bottom of the wall, known as the bottom plate. If the two x four is under a piece of plywood or covered in another way, measure two and a half inches from the reference wire toward the two x four and drill there. That should put the hole in the middle of the plate. Check with a flashlight to be sure there are no electrical wires or plumbing pipes behind the walls where you'll be working. Step four, cut the opening for the electrical box. Drill a half inch starter hole at a corner of your electrical box outline. Start at the hole and cut along the outline with the drywall saw. It's okay if the edges of the opening are rough. You'll conceal this opening with a wall plate later. Step five, run the cable. In your attic, use the spade bit to drill a hole through the top plate directly above the new electrical box location. If you're running cable through a basement or crawl space, drill a hole in the bottom plate directly below the box. Feed your fish tape into the wall opening, pushing it up into the hole you made in the top plate. If you're running cable through a basement or crawl space, push it down to the hole in the bottom plate. You can use the end of a coat hanger to pull the end of the fish tape through the hole. Step six, running cable past a fire block. A fire block is a horizontal beam of wood running between the wall studs. You can drill a hole through them or create a notch to accommodate your wire. To drill a hole, insert a long flexible drill bit through the opening for the electrical box and position it on the center of the fire block, then drill through the fire block. To cut a notch, Cut into the drywall at the location of the wall block, then use a sharp chisel and a hammer to cut a three quarter inch wide by one inch deep notch in the fire block as a conduit for the cable. Pull the cable past the fire block. After you have fished the cable through the notch, cover the notch with a metal nail plate to protect the cable from nail damage, then patch over the drywall hole. Step seven, pull the cable through the wall. From the attic, basement, or crawl space, use electrical tape to secure one end of the cable to the hook on the fish tape. At the wall opening, steadily retract the fish tape, pulling the cable into the wall opening. Be careful not to create friction. This might damage the cable sheathing. It also avoids making kinks that could damage the wire. 
And there you have it, running wire made easy. Now, before you start running wire yourself, make sure you have all the items you need. For tools, you'll need a stud finder, a voltage tester, drywall saw, fish tape, chisel, level, a cordless drill including a 1 8 drill bit and a half inch drill bit. If you don't have a cordless drill, they're available to rent at the Home Depot Tool Rental Center. For materials, you'll need some guide wire. Got any questions? Head over to your local Home Depot and spark up a conversation with the handy folks in the electrical department.